G'day, I'm Teo Pelizzeri, and welcome to the Liberty A-League Grand Final Highlight Show. It's the two best teams of the season going head-to-head -head at Combank Stadium, in front of a record crowd of 9,519. Your commentators for the action between Sydney FC and Western United are Grace Gill and Robbie Thompson. And I'm pleased to say after a torrid weekend of weather in Sydney, it is a perfect day for the biggest match of the year. Early 20s, sunshine and a pitch, a stage set for the battle of the best. Just one point separated first and second at the end of the 2022-23 season. As we have a look at Western United, coach Mark Torcaso, two changes from the semi-final win over Sydney FC, one enforced, Left back Angie Beard, excellent in that first semi, has had foot surgery. So the more attack minded Danielle Steer comes in for her. She'll play up front in that 4 3 3, while TJ Vlanich will step back to left back. The other change is Canadian born Philippines international Jacqueline Savicki, who replaces Melissa Taranto in midfield. Up front, Hannah Keane, the Golden Boot, will be looking to fire more goals into the back of the net. There is TJ Vlanich there. 32 years of age, she's won two grand finals with Melbourne City. The Serbian international is tasked this afternoon with trying to keep tabs on Courtney Vine. What a battle that will be. Well, for Sydney FC, Ante Juric said this is the best team he has ever coached as they look to end a run of three consecutive grand final defeats. No changes from the team that overcame Melbourne victory last weekend. Five of this side named in the PFA's Team of the Year, starting with captain Natalie Tobin, who makes her 100th appearance in the A-League. In midfield, Sarah Hunter, Rachel Lowe and Mackenzie Hawksby will be looking to provide the ammunition for Princess Sabini, top scorer Madison Haley and Matilda Courtney Vine fully recovered from that calf injury and there is Princess Urbini who joins Avi Lewick with seven grand final appearances this afternoon there's coach Mark Tocaso what an achievement for him and a man who has won every single cup final he's coached in five in a row with Calder United in the NPL up against Ante Juric who equals Jeff Hopkins' record for coaching in six A-League Grand Finals. A little extra to that record, all six in a row. We are all set for the start, the countdown around Combank Stadium. It all comes down to this. New meets old. Western United looking to put the finishing touches and a happy ending on their fairy tale season. Their first ever in the Liberty A League against the juggernaut that is Sydney FC. Their sixth grand final in a row. Their tenth in 15 in the competition's history. And looking for a record equaling fourth grand final triumph. Grace Gill, a two time grand final winner yourself. You know what it takes. This one pits two opposing tactics. Two teams that were clearly the best in the land this year. What a 90 minutes, perhaps 120 awaits. Well, thank you and good afternoon, Robbie. And what a beautiful afternoon it is for the Liberty A-League Grand Final, 15th season of the competition and a fitting final at that, arguably the two best teams in the competition and meeting this afternoon on the biggest stage. And it has started exactly as we'd expected it to. Physical, very physical. Now Courtney Vine against Vlainich. Vine's got the pace, but Vlainich has the discipline, sticks to the task. First corner of the match for the Sky Blues. Vlainich has done well there and she had a lot of work to do. It won't be the last time we see Courtney Vine tear down that right flank for Sydney FC and Vlainich, if that's anything to go by, is going to have a big afternoon on her hands. And she's still feeling that collarbone throat where she was hit by Sydney Cummings. 
Mackenzie Hawksby. Short little training ground move for Princess Sabini at the near post. Her turn was well read by Adriana Taranto. Papadopoulos in fact, in that near post. Hawksby again, this time longer. The yield comes, doesn't get there! Madison Haley! Just three minutes on the clock. And Sydney FC have that early goal that has proved so elusive in recent weeks. A dream start for Sydney FC. Hawksby the delivery. Haley the finish. Well, it didn't take them long. On the Harvey Norman replay, a well swung in corner from Mackenzie Hawksby. And all year those deliveries. That was a peach of a ball and Madison Haley rises above the rest in what is a thumping header. And Sydney FC, they're off the mark. Papadopoulos. The cross in, steers in the middle. Robies can't find her. A little more promising there from Western United. Just starting to gain a bit of territory back in there, attacking third, attacking half. That's a nice turn by Taranto on the left foot. Just trying to float it into that top corner. And it had Jada Wyman racing across to cover that top right-hand corner. There was a lovely little drop of the shoulder there from Adriana Taranto. Great turn of speed. She's had a strong season throughout this year with Western United, Taranto. Really important cog in the midfield. Eight clean sheets for Jada Wyman this season. Two for Katie Offer, the backup goalkeeper. Wyman's touch, but she's being very closely marked by Vlenic. Princess Sabini closing down Pap Papadopoulos, almost winning it back for Sydney FC. Planich again towards Keane. It's perfectly weighted. And Hannah Keane just showing she doesn't need much of a sighting on goal. That had something behind it. Hannah Keane, how many times this year has she just created something out of nothing? That first touch just allowed her a little glance up to see where Jada Wyman was. And that didn't miss by much. Here they come again, Hunter with Haley, Hawksby now with Lowe. Ball wide for Vine, they love to try and isolate Courtney Vine one-on-one. -on -one. Lowe in again, she can hit them from distance. She scored twice against Western United this season as well in that 3-0 victory. Rules touch, corner, says the referee. The challenge by Carly Johnson. Solid challenge, good shoulder to shoulder. Sydney FC just starting to probe in that final third, ask a few questions of Western United's defensive shape. Hawksby, ball again, back post, and again, the header! It's in, and it's Nat Tobin! The Sydney captain, in her 100th match, The player that almost left at the start of last season called up the coach and said, please, can I play again? And Tayuri said, yep, and you can be my captain. And here she is on the score sheet in the grand final. There's no one more deser deserving on the Harvey Norman replay. Nat Tobin, the captain, the leader of this side, left unmarked on that second ball. And Western United are struggling defensively with these corners. It was the same delivery from Hawksby, the same area in the six-yard box. And that Tobin has done well to rise above the rest as that ball dropped down. And what an occasion on her hundredth appearance for Sydney FC.
ball in from Vlaenic. Headed on nicely by Steer. Keane is there. Somehow cleared. But it's still alive. Cummings back in, deflected right in front of Wyman. And somehow she kept it out. Well, those moments, those moments can breathe life into a team. And Sydney FC struggled to scrap a clearance away. Western United struggled to scrap a clearance into the back of the net. Well, it's a crucial save from Jada Wyman. done what she's had to do well she was called up to the last Matilda's squad as well that played Scotland and England as Haley's just been trodden on there I think by Alana Cern referee didn't see anything untoward in the challenge as Weston looked to go forward clever little control headed pass from Hannah Keane now steer Keane's in the middle early ball comes near post it's a great run and it just didn't have the power to beat Wyman, but it was on target again from Hannah Keane. She really doesn't need much of an opportunity, does she? It's the smallest of windows for Hannah Keane. All while Madison Haley remained down at the other end of the pitch and seems to be in some distress. It's this challenge here, just to come in together of feet. And Alana Cern is come down heavily on that foot, that plant foot, but what a pass from Danielle Steer to pick out Hannah Keane. And that is tantalizingly close. Charter Wyman yet again. An important touch just to push that wide. Now indeed the two best defenses in the land going head to head. Johnson, oh, she's got the better of Fenton. The cutback towards Keane is there for Taranto. Thrusting up the arm. Now Papadopoulos towards the back post. A chance to put her name up in lights there. There's a floating ball across to the far post. A little awkward one. Fajada Wyman, Carly Johnson, she's been exceptional this first half, driving at players. Fajada Wyman had a few concerns. She had some work to do to cover that far post, but fortunately for her, there were no green and black shirts to meet that ball. The half that went according to plan for Sydney FC. The 15th. Liberty A-League Grand Final for the moment is turning in Sydney FC's favour. Half-time at Combank, Sydney FC 2, Western United 0. It's Sydney FC with a two-goal cushion that get the second half underway. These two sides have met three times previously. The winning team, twice Western United, once Sydney FC, have kept a clean sheet on each occasion. Gray Skill, we know this one is set up nicely now. We know that Western United have come from behind already four times in the regular season. Can they do it again here, though, on the biggest stage? And just hold that thought, because here goes Carly Johnson bursting into the area, and she's just overhit it. Well, what that says to me, Robbie, is that Western United are a resilient side. They do have the ability and the personnel to come back. Carly Johnson, she's been relentless across the first 45 minutes, and this is a big half, arguably the biggest half of Western United's young career in the Liberty A-League. Haley finds Hawksby on the edge of the area. Low again. With Hunter for Hawksby, always so busy in and around the edge of the box. With Low for Rule. Oh, the knockdown down for Hawksby! 
Well, it was there to be struck. It was there to give Sydney an almost unassailable lead, and she couldn't do it. Well, Mackenzie Hawksby can only sit and reflect on how close and what could have been that opened up so kindly for her. Hawksby still full of running like it's the first minute. Now Abini. Wide left against Papadopoulos. Abini looking for an option. Appeals from the crowd for handball. Nothing given. Strong from Blainich. McLean long back towards Madison Haley. Fantastic control. Now by saved again by Hillary Beal. Sydney FC they continue to push forward. Madison Haley, how about this bit of skill? Cushions that on her chest. Drops it back nicely for Courtney Vine. He went for a composed side foot, attempted a finish, but Hillary Beale yet again is there. And now Abini straightens up, driving between two. Haley has to stretch. <laughs> Penalty. Handball, says Casey Rybelt. She wasn't pointing to the spot, she was pointing towards the goal. And it is a penalty. Well, Sydney FC will now have the opportunity to extend their lead to three. Let's see what happened here. We'll get another look at this. There was a linking of the arms of the two players. No handball from what I can see. Here, the arm across Princess Abini from Papadopoulos. As Abini's driving forward, but I think both players are party to that. Well, it must be Papadopoulos, I think you're right, who's been singled out by Casey Rybelt. So Princess Abini, who equals Ivy Lewick and the record of seven grand final appearances. to make this 3-0. And she does so. And she runs to celebrate with the Sydney FC fans. And her teammates do too. Surely now, with less than half an hour left to play, Sydney FC is shaking that grand final hoodoo off their back. As we have a look on the Harvey Norman replay, the hold on Abini, resulting in the penalty, and a really professionally hit penalty by Princess Abini, who runs to celebrate with the Cove. That feels, perhaps for Western United now, like a hill too steep to climb. It's going to be Rachel Lowe. Her job is done. The player who admitted this week that she's been suffering from post-viral fatigue has never really felt 100% all season. A remarkable story. She's filled in as centre forward when there was nobody else to do it, not her natural position. She scored a couple of goals as well and now she's replaced by another youngster because that too is Sydney FC. Bringing the youngsters forward, Shay Holman coming as here goes Vine, Courtney Vine, always rising. Courtney Vine doesn't quite have her radar in tonight, finding herself in really good positions, having a lot of fun up and down that right hand side, all except the final product, but how many times has Madison Haley been at the base of a delightful pass to find space and perhaps Beale got a little snicko on that save. Roll up, Badawia is coming into the contest to replace Courtney Vine. Another American into the fray. And Indiana Dos Santos, at just 15 years, 
and 201 days. She could have got in for free with the Liberty package. Now becomes the youngest ever player to feature in a grand final. Having become the youngest ever Sydney FC goal scorer earlier this season and the fifth youngest in Liberty A-League history. Badawia straight into the action. Badawia still crosses. Haley almost got on the end of that one again. And as they head down behind the goal, they know that they can touch it now. Talent in this Sydney FC side, the youth, the players who have been there for some time, average age of 21, they may be strong, but they're still a very young side, which gives such great hope to the future of the A-League and Sydney FC. And now Madison Haley for the finishing touch, and she's got it. And now the celebrations can really begin. Stoppage time. Madison Haley with the icing on the cake. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. It goes for that goal for the American number nine. It goes for this football club, Sydney FC. Because tonight they have silenced the critics. Tonight they are champions of Australia. In the Harvey Norman replay, Madison Haley again. She's been unrelenting all evening. The pressure was on Sydney FC to come into this match and make something of it and have faced that pressure head on. And Madison Haley, she has been key to everything Sydney FC tonight. Madison Haley with Fenton. The five minutes of stoppage time are up. Whistle to the mouth. It's all over. After three years of heartbreak, Sydney FC are back atop the tree in the Liberty A-League. They've done the double. Premier's plate and grand final for just the second time in the club's history. A fantastic night in front of a record crowd at Combank. Sydney FC have run out clear winners in the 15th Liberty A-League Grand Final. Champions for 2023, Sydney FC 4, Western United 0. What a season it's been for Sydney FC and their coach, Ante Juric. The best team over the course of the campaign and deserved champions. Thank you for joining us over the past six months and we look forward to seeing you again next season.